this game has been in some form of development, not really true development, but some form of development since, you know, Halo 5 came out. Um, they had to scrap what was already going on with Halo 6, but they had to, you know, build a new idea for Halo Infinite, what, be what would become Halo Infinite. They redid their engine, you know, built all this new stuff from scratch. They're, they're doing a game that's on Xbox One all the way through Xbox Series X, as well as PC, cloud, uh, cross progression, you know, cross play, all that stuff. People working on this game for six plus years, people who have been at 343 since Halo 5, they've been sitting on this project forever, not being able to say or do anything about it. And for those people that are creative, for those people that need their their work to be shown, to be played, to be enjoyed by people, to have that energy, it's got to be so hard for them at this point. Think if they had delayed it till fall of 2022 to be those people who have been sitting there for years working on this game. They've already played Halo Infinite's multiplayer and campaign for years now. Think about that. There's people with 343 who have probably played... The first time they played the campaign all the way through was over a year ago. Well, I think That's a good insane. comparison, for example, is like, imagine if we recorded 50 episodes of the podcast, but didn't publish them so that people could hear them and yeah. thinking, oh, this one feels good, or this is cool, or we can't wait to people hear this or hear what they think about this and not being able to hear that for a year and then potentially and record new episodes without the, the positive feedback from the prior ones. Correct. I need you to tell me right now exactly what you were doing this morning. Michael, I cannot tell you what I was doing there. But you have to trust me. I would never do anything to hurt you or this company. Okay. You know what? I want you to think about your future at this company. I want you to think about it long and hard. That's what she said. Don't, don't you dare. I'm waiting for that, waiting to get to that point. It, it gets to a point where you definitely want to just get it out there. Yeah, so I think, I think as far as like this particular point I'm trying to make... When it comes to the mental health of employees, the, their creative abilities, their morale, I think releasing this game is going to release a bunch of endorphins. It's yeah, going to be very right. euphoric. You're right. It's going to make. It's going to give the whole team energy, especially provided the game is well reviewed, which I'd have to guess it's going to be. Even if it's not some ten out of ten people want it to be, I think it's going to be a well reviewed game. I think. I think most of the pillars are there to seem that it's. It's probably going to be. It's probably going to land. You know. So that's going to reinvigorate the team. Um, they're like and like Josh said, it's a live service. So even if all this stuff was there at launch, the truth of the matter is, and I know we love to go, we love to make jokes about how, oh, of course it's live service. That way you can cut off parts of the game and release it later and say it's a feature. That that does happen in the game industry. It is bullshit. But the fact of the matter is, launch Halo Infinite, is just the beginning. Yeah, Halo Infinite is a live service game. So mm. in years. Halo Infinite is going to be very different than it is at launch. Even if Co-op and Forge had released at launch, we still would have new multiplayer maps, modes, new seasons, new cosmetics. It looks like probably new campaigns, whatever that means. You know, whatever that means, if it's like little side campaigns. In years yeah, from now, even the, main, even, the, even the main menus are probably going to change. You know, we're going to have different menu overlays and stuff like that, like to do the MCC. Good point. So this game is going to change and evolve in ways that Halo 3 or 4 or 5, whatever, were never meant to. So even if we got this stuff at launch, you're gonna it's not going to be the same. There's obviously a different scope to this game. So that's one way to look at it. The mental health of employees, their creative abilities. I think there's a point where even if you wanted everything to be perfect for this game, and that definitely seems like what they're, they've been aiming for. You know, the classic style, art style, the classic music, the marketing, everything has been painting this picture of them wanting to bring Halo back and make it better than ever, and just make no mistakes. And I think they get to this point right now where it's like, if we want this game to come out this year, we either have to release it with no co-op and no forge, or a broken, cobbled together co-op, co-op, forge, or delay another year. And I think they're just saying, there comes a point where no matter how much you want to be perfect, no matter how much you want this thing to succeed, at some point you have to throw your hands up and go, it's time to release this game. It's time to release this game. Remember Halo 2 that's been talked about to death. Everything they went through with that game, and all the problems they had, and that game came out, and even though it was a huge success, I know it still had a lot of problems. You know, constant pop in. You know, the campaign seemed to end abruptly. You know, weapons weren't tuned right. The graphics nowadays look like that Unreal Engine pop in, except the graphics don't pop in. I'm like, where are they at? There you go. But ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, they didn't have a choice. They had to release the game, and it came out. And it's something we all look back at. Well, most of us look back at fondly. And I think that's that with that with Infinite. And I think they've. They've gotten a little more time than, than probably other Halo games have to make this work. 
I think it's just, I think it's a case of it's just time to release it. Um, another thing to think about, guys, is when you look at what AAA first-person shooters are bringing you day one nowadays, Halo offers so much more, and it always has. And I think with the industry ch- trends changing, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the industry trends changing, the uh, the new consoles, 4K ray tracing, you know, there's so much fidelity and, and so much stuff going on that for them to be able to be on par or better with their contemporaries in releasing a full multiplayer suite, which is what some games only have that. Like, look at Apex or the new Battlefield 2042. It's only multiplayer. Well, Halo's releasing that. They're also releasing a full-fledged, semi-open world campaign uh, with all these cosmetics, and then there's still the planned co-op and forge. And when you look at most games coming out nowadays, a lot of them don't even have campaigns. And the ones that have campaigns and multiplayer, they definitely don't have forge. And most of them don't have a lot of co- a lot of them don't have co-op, or if they have co-op, it's not split screen. I mean, all the things that we expect of a Halo today, for better or worse, because of how the industry has changed, that it's just asking for a lot, you know. And I know we had it back in 2007, but I think so often to make our point, we kind of gloss over details on purpose, and then as we repeat ourselves over and over again, we forget those little details. Forge today is far more ambitious than Forge was in 2007. Co-op today on a semi-open world, uh, multi-platform, cross-generational game, that's a lot different than Halo 3. I mean, it, things have changed so much. The, the it is. The tools have changed, the, the fidelity, I, I mean, it's I just not it's, the same. You it's know? not. And that's a really excellent point. Excellent, <laughs> excellent point, Brian. <laughs> well, well said. Uh, I think it's definitely a case of you know, us being kind of like boomer gamers and yeah. holding on to we're so conditioned to how things were and it felt like in the 360 PS3 era that things just got better in that way because suddenly yeah. you got games that you can now play this stuff with your friends online like co-op you know it was, it was cool I mean it doesn't really get talked about nowadays but it was pretty awesome when Bungie announced that Halo 3 would have online co-op you know just to be able to play it over Xbox Live not just multiplayer that was pretty huge uh, that was a big deal but um you know, holding on to all that stuff and, and getting to see how it evolved into that that era, the 360 and PS3, and it feels like it's taken a bit of a backseat, and it hasn't. Well, in plenty of sense, it it has, but another sense, in another sense, it hasn't, because I mean, you, you're really just developing games differently now, right? And you're just finding different ways to do stuff. And Alex said it best so long ago on the show, but games nowadays are competing for. To, to be hobbies, less games and, and cinematic experiences and all that, and more hobbies. And you don't get that with every game, which is great, thank God. But well, there's a just lot a of different them, audience of gamers today. Yeah, it, it definitely. And I mean, it is cool to still have that stuff. I mean, if, there's plenty of games I could think about that, you know, I would have loved to have gotten DLC when I was a kid, or to have gotten some kind of feature like this where there was always additional content coming out, so I could continue to live in these worlds and get new experiences in these games without having to wait, you know, for a sequel or something like that. I mean, there's benefits to it, but like Brian said, uh, so perfectly, I mean, it's just, it comes a point when you got to draw the line and say, like, we got to release this game. And I mean, don't get us wrong. I mean, hey, if the, (laughs) I hope I don't speak this into existence, but like, imagine if the game comes out and the campaign on single player is buggy, super messed up or something, or there's connection issues or something to do with the multiplayer, even despite all the tech tests still has issues that's going to be unacceptable and that's going to be a point where people have to say this is bullshit and yes i know i don't want to yell you know talk down to you guys you guys obviously work tooth and nail to get this done and get it out but like you gotta you know as fans we have to draw the line somewhere with being supportive and 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 giving criticism and saying this is enough and then on the other side we have to draw the line and with giving empathy well give more empathy and say like this is better for them to get out and i think that's the best way to look at it like there's, in, in terms of, like like Brian said, it's not really a case of crunch. It's a case of these people have been waiting to show this game and get it out. And imagine how invigorated they're probably going to feel once people are able to even play the game, rather than keep it in the shadows and keep it secret. Keep it secret. Keep it secret. They want to show off more campaign stuff. They want to show off more multiplayer stuff. They've been waiting to for so long. They have to keep their lips sealed so much on this stuff. But getting it out is going to mean a lot more for them than it is for us and uh 
considering that we're Halo fans and considering that we're 343 fans and we happen to uh, at least like people there, if not love them, um, I think it's important to to be supportive of that. And I've, I've had to relearn that over the course of the last couple of days. Well, you'd like, you'd like to think that, because, you know, basically what Joe said was that if they want to have this polished, stable launch on December 8th, now that we know December 8th, and to do that, they're giving, they're putting co-op and Forge to the side, mm-hmm. giving them the time they need, and honing the entire team in to finishing this package that they've built for launch. He used a term, I don't know what it was, it was something like blackout mode or dark mode or something like that he used for the team just zeroing in. I remember. Finishing yeah. this. So I remember. He, when, when he gives us that... Are you sure about that? That reason or excuse or whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I take it seriously. You know, like Josh said, if, if we get the game at launch and, and I'm okay with there being a bug or so or several or maybe a crash randomly every, you know, two, three days I play something. The game, I, I can allot some mistakes. There's a bazillion moving parts here. But ultimately that campaign, that multiplayer needs to be up and working and running and, and as intended on on day one because that's what that's the reasoning they're giving us you know we should if we're getting less features at launch the features that we are getting should be should be fine 